three cheetah cubs have died in India this week. Needless to say, it's another setback for the central government, a setback to a historic effort by the government to reintroduce the species to the country after 70 years of extinction. Now, two cubs died yesterday. They were a part of a litter of four born in late March to a cheetah named Siaya. Now, Siaya was one of eight rehabilitated cheetahs brought from Namibia to Kuno National Park in September last year. Now, the latest deaths brings us to the figure of six. Yes, six cheetahs have died since their reintroduction into India. These deaths are concerning. The number is alarming and the conservationists are worried that they are questioning the government's move. Earlier, the Madhya Pradesh Foreign Minister also said that the African cheetahs must be shifted from the Kuno National Park. Well, is it time for the relocation? Will the government put cheetahs first this time? Or will their ego proceed over innocent lives again? My colleague Samya spoke to wildlife conservationist Valmik Thapar. Listen in to what he had to say. Mr. Thapar, knowing you are an avid wildlife um, lover, I want to know what was your first reaction and thoughts that came to you when you heard about the death of six cheetahs. It is an alarming number because it is also including the death of the cubs. My first question to you essentially will be that given India's temperature, the habitat and the terrain, the kind of wildlife that we have naturally here in India, do you think it's time that India must accept that we cannot have cheetahs in India's natural environment? I agree with that entirely. This is not the land of the cheetah. This project was a multi-million dollar project ill-advised from the beginning. The money should have been used and focused on our very special wildlife, right from the snow leopards in the Himalayas, to tigers, to the wild ass, to great Indian bustards, to a variety of species all over India. They need the money. They need the protection. India doesn't have the terrain, the temperature, the prey, or the habitat to reintroduce African cheetahs. I am a great believer, and it is my opinion, that in the last 300 years, India never had large populations of cheetahs. What they had were strays. We call them like we have paltu pets, paltu dogs. Thousands of cheetahs in India were with the super rich, the rajas, the maharajas, the super elite. The same was true in China and Mongolia. The cheetah was a loved pet most of the time. It came from source populations in Africa where it lives wild where they are wide open spaces, where the cheetah can run at 110 kilometers an hour without a stony ground. Can you imagine in Kuno Palpur, a cheetah running at that speed, hitting a stone or a rock or a nala or a dry river bed? Its leg will break. So why were we doing this massive project? For what purpose? It's a question I'm asking. Why did we need this? Now, Mr. Thapar, this uh, wasn't a project that was initiated just a few years ago. This project was in the making since the time Jairam Ramesh was the Environment Minister and there was a lot of back and forth as far as appropriating the political credit for it. But do you think that at the very outset, this was an ill-advised project to bring the cheetahs out of the African forest and expect them to adapt to this environment at the Kuno National Park? It was an ill-advised project. Jairam, who I knew for many years personally, triggered this cheetah reintroduction. I think he made a mistake because before him, the, okay. Supreme Court, the Honorable Supreme Court had said no cheetahs to be reintroduced. And he restarted the process of bringing the cheetah here. Now, it sounds very glamorous. It's like a vanity project. Oh, I'm bringing the cheetah back. But you have to have a heart to look after such a beautiful animal elegant, fragile, absolutely never harmed man. It never attacks man in the wild. It doesn't bite its owner when it's a pet. It has no case of an attack of man. Dogs kill their owners. 4,000 people die in India because of their dogs. The cheetah never does that. And now we are stuck with these leftover cheetahs, 15, 16. I believe it is our job to keep them alive, whether they come into a big enclosure, whether we review the project. But in reviewing the project, we require the opposing scientists' views. Dr. Dharminder Khandal, Dr. Olaskaran, Dr. Raghu Chundavat, Dr. Ravi Chelam, Dr. Ishandar, all of them have to be brought to a round table. We don't want one view. Like when you and I went to school, we were given a chance to debate. So there's one opinion on one side, another opinion on another side, and you evolve your opinion. We are not evolving any opinion. 
everyone is on one side and nobody is listening to the other side. So we need a round table, a think tank to find a way to keep these cheetahs alive. What do we do with them? Are they going to be reintroduced? Do we modify the project? Do we withdraw the project? Do we keep it in a drive-in enclosure? You can come and see them. I think they should be kept safe. This is not, this is an unfriendly land for cheetahs. India is a land of tigers, leopards and hyenas. All of them will kill cheetahs. But Mr. Thapar, when this project was introduced, there was a huge pomp and show and the entire project was introduced by the Prime Minister. He had released cheetah in the Kuno National Park. But I would like to bring to your attention and the attention of our viewers the reasons that were cited for the death of the cheetahs in the last few months. There was illness. They claimed the cheetah had renal issue. The second died of a cardiac arrest. And then there was violent mating attempt by two older males. And now the cubs who died of heat and dehydration. Do you think there is something that we are getting drastically wrong with the implementation of the project? What are we getting wrong as far as keeping the cheetah safe? I think it should be reviewed by a whole group of people where both sides are listened to. I think temperature is an important point in the survival of cheetahs. But earlier on, the government was saying cheetahs can survive India's summer. Obviously, the cubs haven't survived it because they're now saying temperatures were too hot, sweltering hot, so the cubs died. Now, cheetah males and females, while courting and mating, I have watched them in the wilds of the Serengeti. They never harm each other. They're aggressive around each other, but there are three males and a female together, and they don't attack each other. They are very, very careful. So I think a lot of people who are dealing with the project need to look at wild cheetahs in Tanzania and Kenya. South Africa is not a good model. In South Africa, you have pineapple farms converted into wildlife parks. 90% of South Africa's areas are fenced in. They are half paltu janvar, half wild janvar. And we need wild wildlife scientists to look at this. We don't want only veterinary specialists. This is not a veterinary project. This is about free-ranging cheetahs. If we want cheetahs to roam free, we need to survey the whole of India to see if there's a place. If there's no place, then you have to withdraw the project because we don't want any more fatalities. At least I'll be shocked, stunned, if more cheetahs start dying. And we still have a summer to go through. And then we have a furious monsoon. What's going to happen? How many people, the poor forest staff of Kuno, they are running around madly trying to keep cheetahs alive. We need to also look at their problems. Then, Mr. Thapar, uh, shifting cheetahs out of the Kuno National Park, like was one of the suggestions by the Madhya Pradesh Forest Minister, that we can shift the cheetahs to three different national parks within Madhya Pradesh. Do you think there is a need to shift them absolutely into a space that is controlled, an open space maybe in Madhya Pradesh or in Rajasthan, where the temperature can be controlled? I would think at the moment this is a very important thing to do because... It, the, the whole business of relocation is highly torturous and traumatic for cheetahs. It's like when you are put unconscious before an operation, the same thing is happening to the cheetah repeatedly. When it goes to Jhansi, it's darted and brought back. So it's going through Behoshi all the time. So yes, I think that new enclosures need to be found. They need to be enclosed. They need cool res recesses where coolers are put where they can go and deal with 50 degrees centigrade in the sun because that's the Indian summer, which people haven't realized it gets really hot. I had an African friend of mine, an expert on big cats, who was recently with me in Rajasthan, and he said, how can cheetahs survive in this heat? It's impossible. Even for human beings in the sun, at 48 degrees, it's a problem. And these are delicate, fragile animals, I assure you. And they're not, they're very susceptible to disease because their genetic difference is very slight because of a genetic depression 10,000 years ago. People don't realize this. They're not like the 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 the... the ability of tigers and lions to deal with disease. Cheetahs are very, very susceptible. So they're big problems all along. But at least get people together to listen to all the opposing views before taking decisions. Nobody can get to Kuno. Journalists have tried to go to Kuno. They're saying, no, no, no. They're not inviting anyone. Be transparent. Be open. Show the world what you're doing. What are you hiding? What is the point of not allowing people into Kuno after nine months of having cheetahs there? Before I let go of you, Mr. Thapar, my last question to you will be, while a lot of fanfare was attached to this project Cheetah, do you think there's a need to take a step back and prioritize the cheetahs, their environment, their habitat and their health, rather than making it an ego issue? Do you think 
there is a glimmer of hope to save this project or should this be aborted? Nobody looks at the needs of the animal and what it really requires. We look at what our pride and ego and vanity des desires. So I think we need a rethink on that. Try and understand the cheetah. If you want cheetahs, give them the right temperature. Have a huge enclosure. Allow people to drive in and look at their beauty, their grace and their elegance. But don't put them through the torture that they're going through right now. And to get opposing views is really important. As I say, we learned this in a kindergarten in school. The government needs to learn it today. Well, thank you, Mr. Valmik Thapar, for taking our time and joining us here at the Daily Mirror and sharing your very important and significant views on Project Cheetah and how to save cheetahs at Kundu National Park.